The next Starship and booster to take flight scorches Earth. The first direct to sell capable Starlink satellites lift off. And SpaceX is targeted once again by the woke mind virus they once yoked themselves to. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News in 2024. Let's go back in time and cover what happened over the holidays. The D-1 gate at the Gateway to Mars launch site received a new SpaceX sign late last month, where SpaceX lit up both stages of the Starship rocket to kick off the next test flight. The first static fire taking place last Friday the 29th, starting with Ship 28, lighting up a single Raptor engine to demonstrate a flight-like startup for an in-space burn. Then shortly after, its booster, number 10, lit all 33 of its Raptor engines. Elon posting on X that they just completed a static fire test of Flight 3 Super Heavy Booster. Then the latter made her way back to the production site for final preparations before stacking. Her upper half met her there after leaving the launch site on Thursday night. Both Ship 30 and Booster 12 were also transported for testing to Massey's for some cryo stress tests with the thrust simulator, which took place on Ship 30 this Wednesday. And Ship 28 was the first to enter the new high base SpaceX had been constructing these past few months. NASA published an article over the holidays revealing they have tested a subscale mock-up elevator to be used on the Starship human landing system for Artemis 3 and 4. Built at SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, the elevator will transport equipment and crew between the ship's habitable area near the top of the lander and the lunar surface. During the demo, astronauts wore spacesuits that simulate the suit's size and mobility constraints that crew will face on the moon. Well, SpaceX is once again being targeted by progressives that used to be on their payroll. This issue stems back to the summer of 2022 when a letter was circulated around the SpaceX workplace that focused on Elon's tweets that a handful of entitled workers didn't find very inclusive or in alignment with the company's policies on diversity. Well, since those half dozen employees were fired just hours after circulating the letter, they've now filed with the National Labor Relations Board. And if SpaceX doesn't settle the case, and if they've been found to have violated the law, courts could order them to reinstate the workers with back pay. And actually, it just dropped that SpaceX is suing the National Labor Relations Board. Go get them. It should also be noted that California is an at-will state, and these woke morons who clearly don't care for the law themselves, namely Elon's right to the First Amendment, had the bright idea to criticize their CEO, not to his face, but cowardly behind his back to other employees. Huge derp. <laughs> Since my last episode aired just before Christmas, SpaceX has launched three Starlink missions, two from the Cape and the last one from Vandenberg, which was the first to carry six Starlink satellites with direct-to-cell capabilities that enable mobile network operations around the world to provide seamless global access to texting, calling, and browsing wherever you may be on land, lakes, or coastal waters without changing hardware or firmware. Elon also stated during a SpaceX session on X that he no longer plans on taking Starlink private, an idea he actually never considered doing in the first place. We're thinking about that zero. Was that we're thinking about that what? Zero. Zero? Zero. Not thinking about it at all. We need to make the thing work. December 23rd's mission also launched the record-breaking 19th flight with booster 1058, but was also her last since she tipped over on her way back to port due to high winds and choppy seas. SpaceX followed up with a statement that newer Falcon boosters have been equipped with upgraded landing legs with self-leveling capabilities. SpaceX also launched Sarah 2 and 3 satellites on Christmas Eve from Vandenberg, using a booster that flew for its eighth time and landed back at the west coast like she's done this before, because she has. On January 3rd, Obzon 3, a comm satellite, was launched from the east coast to geosynchronous transfer orbit. On X, Elon posted a full view of the stage separation at sundown. The rocket used a booster that flew for the 10th time and it too landed back at the coast, the east coast, for a soft, albeit heated, landing. Landing like deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And finally, on December 28th, Falcon Heavy lifted off from pad 39A for the last time in 2023. And liftoff of Falcon Heavy. Hoisting the U.S. Space Force's mini spy shuttle, the X-37B. The fresh center stage was discarded, but both side boosters, which flew for the fifth time, landed successfully back at landing zones one and two. Let's watch as the side boosters touch down for landing. Stage two is a thermal guidance. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for stopping by. 
I hope you all survive 2024. It is an election year after all, so good luck with that. But until next time, Godspeed.